So electronium is a musical instrument originally developed by composer called Raymond Scott. He made quite a lot of commercial music for film and so on. And, but at the same time, he had this amazing engineering knowledge. He predi predicted the future of the music and also how music industry is going to be in the future. Because in fact, that now like most of the music composition is happening inside the computer. And, uh, and he really wanted to do like that kind of system in the 60s time. So he actually started building his own musical instruments. So he became a pioneer of the electronic music. Raymond Scott Electronium is kind of his final like, dream in the way he wants to make a kind of machine actually cooperate human and also machine collaborate together to making like, music. So this machine is basically a kind of simulation of what he wanted to do. So Scott started working on the project in 1959, uh, but it didn't gain any traction for about a decade. And so he, he conceptualized the machine as, you know, man and machine symphony. So essentially what could happen is we would input, you know, something into the 12-step sequencer, and then he would have this reactive counterpoint to kind of answer your human input. And then through those two things, it would be like a unique product of its own every time. And the reason it attracted Gordy's interest was because, you know, he wanted a machine that could make Motown hits on the spot. You know, he wanted, it was sold as a generative machine, so you could input what you wanted, and then you could hit a button, and <laughs> this is 1970, like, and then the machine would answer you in a counterpoint. I would say the electronium is sort of a half, half, halfway point between an instrument and a musical accompanist because it's such a complex and a kind of idiosyncratic system which may give you res responses, musical responses that you may not expect. With this you kind of have to go in with an open mind. You say, I'm going to let this system throw different ideas at me. It kind of works as if you were working with another person almost while making that music. So it's not quite an instrument, I wouldn't say. There is a deep neural network running inside the system, which uh, generates so-called counterpoint uh, for the for the music that you that you uh, make. So what it lets you do is you punch in uh, the melody that you want to build into the system, and then you turn on the counterpoint, which then has the neural network generate different harmonic accompaniments for your melody. So what you end up with is, is a piece of music that is part human, part machine. And uh, what is really interesting, I think, about this deep neural network is that it was trained by the Magenta group at Google. And it was trained on Bach chorales. So it's basically all trained on Baroque music. And, and that's what it knows. But, but the thing is that when we use the electronium, we, we tend to build patterns that have nothing to do with the kind of music they made in the Baroque era. So what you end up getting from the neural net is surprisingly varied. So we had a real opportunity here to make the existing mechanical interface just far more intuitive um, and hopefully a little bit less uh, kind of intimidating for the first time player or user. Our solution to the issue of there not being close parity between what you can see and what you can hear is this idea of an explanation layer, something that sits over the top of the mechanical interface as a kind of transparent overlay which tells you exactly where you are in the musical sequence, uh, lets you connect together uh, different connections that have spatial distance um, and no real vis visual connection in the mechanical interface. So when the AI takes over, you can see quite clearly um, its path around the controls and exactly what it's turning and how much. And in turn, you can hear these changes. Uh, so it's, again, just kind of merging uh, what you can hear with what you can, with what you can see. We were kind of able to bring Scott's ambitions to life by using programs. and. As far as we know, doing it physically would still be impossible. So it just kind of shows how much of a dreamer and how forward thinking Scott was. The electronium, of course, was originally designed by Raymond Scott to be an expert machine used by people who are highly specialized in using that machine, whereas we are aiming more for a casual audience where there are exhibition uh, visitors who might engage with the machine for two minutes and, and we want them to also have a satisfying experience. So, so that's what this is all for.